Welcome back to True to Horse. This is Mary. She's one of the adoptees of one of the rescue horses and a volunteer. She's been with us for a year. And uh, the reason we're doing it this way today is no horse in hand. This is what I call our BS place. It's underneath a nice tree up here. Anyway, so um, people have actually, I'm surprised, been emailing me about wanting me to just sit down and talk more about detail and true about true to horse horsemanship and uh, hearing horse stories. And I got enough horse stories, I'd probably write a couple books my other one would sell. Anyway, Mary, hi there. Hi there. Oh, this is a person, I'll give her some flack once in a while, you've heard me on YouTube. When I'm filming, Mary walks down the hill and <laughs> bless her heart, she's going to say something. I know it, so I always got to give her a flag. So I'm always good, in the background. She, she's a real good person. I'm a good cheerleader. And like I said, she's helped out a lot down here. And I appreciate her. Uh, so Mary, let's start number one. Get this out of the way. Somati, or alias Pepper, aggressive horse. Really? Really? I've been getting some personal emails and a couple of people made comments, which I don't, I try not to try to put all the comments on the page, leave them up there, because everybody's got the right to say what they want to. You know, how was, aggressive was it? It was an extremely aggressive, very scary horse. Um, when we came anywhere around the stall, he would, he was very, uh, his attitude was, he'd try to lure you in, and he'd act like he was friendly until you got within an inch of him or two and he'd strike out instantly at you. It was very frightening. I didn't want to really be around him. David started working with him and I'd go in the uh, round pen with him and, and I really wanted to stay out of the pen. With, and I'm not really fearful but he, he scared me because he just was so mean. He really was mean. He'd bite, kick. You didn't know what he was going to do. He was that unpredictable. And that brings up the mind. Part of it, doing research on him and everything, and I think I mentioned in his videos, he was trained, and I hate the term, and I know I get plaque about it, but you know, I am who I am, and that's the way it is. Uh, he was trained with a little old stick, and he was basically overschooled. So, what happens to these horses when they're overschooled with that stuff, something snaps in them, and you get carried away. I got a horse that. She's a big fan of, fan of a certain person, and her horse was super nervous, and she couldn't figure out why. She's worked and worked with this horse, and she kept doing more and more of this natural stuff with the stick, and yada, yada, yada. So she came to me, and I told her, say, you're doing too much. Slow down. Now, we've compromised, and because, well, it does work, but they overschool too much. And my objective, and I'm honest with you, I don't make no bones. In two years from now, all I want to hear is true to horse horsemanship. It doesn't have nothing to do with me. It's about the horse. Now, Mary, through the, you've been here for a year, and you've seen us. Mary's horse got a good example. He, she was started out with natural horsemanship. And at one point, she started rearing up at the lady. And the woman had the attitude, oh my God, I'm stressing this little horse out, so let's put him up. So she taught this mare she can rear up and walk to you and buffalo you. And that's what I'm seeing with a lot of these horses. We don't want to stress the horses out. I hear about my dogs. Well, you know what? When you're trail riding, these horses are going to see dogs. They need to be that. They need to how to cope with it. We're in a society now, not only with the horses, with people, with their dogs, we want to take that stress. Well, that's what we're about. We need to learn how to handle that stress. Now, Mary, you've seen a big change in yours, haven't you? So she's night and day difference than when we, we started uh, her under uh, saddle and she had been ridden. David was training her. She was fine. And she, she was very unpredictable. She The groundwork, and I've just spent a year basically, and David's worked with her um, this entire year. And it's been an absolute, she's a completely different animal. Completely different animal. So she, she has a tendency to be very high strung, um, but she, she's calmed down, she's calm, she's, she's predictable. And there was a point that I never thought I'd say that my horse would be predictable, and she is predictable. And that's thanks to David's uh, training and, and my insistence on, on spending a lot of time on the ground with her as opposed to, to just 
pushing her too far and going too fast. She's just one that you have to go slower with. Yeah, and uh, you can't back down from her. No. But you can't, what I call being fair to her. I'm talking loud and clear all the time to her, but also I'm being fair. And Mary, you, you've been doing a lot of research here lately. Someday she's just shaking her head. But anyhow, and you've been looking up on the internet and all. In your opinion, I want your honest opinion. What's the difference between true to horse horsemanship versus natural horsemanship? Well, I, I, I guess the, the difference I, I'm seeing is true to horses. Um, you're making, I guess, accountable. I think they're accountable for their actions. They're very accountable as opposed to um, doing things on a natural basis and but still not understanding that they still are an animal and that they're going to be doing things in their demeanor as opposed to you doing it with true to yourself, I think, and true to this horse, you make them accountable for their actions. Exactly. And, I'm one, and also my big thing is every horse I approach time with that when I can have fun with that horse. If I got natural, if I'm starting a colt that's that way, it's naturally a given horse, shoot, if they're naturally light and harder, I'm going to throw a saddle on it and get it given it a bit and I'm going to get on it and start having fun. And that's another thing that's true to horse horsemanship. I promote having fun with your horse, doing something with it and not get stuck in the mainstream. And also it's always on the positive. I don't think about if you have a 90 minute session and 85 of it's going bad, I tell them forget about that 85 minutes bad. Think of that five minutes that usually at the end where it's going good. And then because next time it's going to get better. And, and also with big and true to horse horsemanship is being true to yourself. Like Mary, I've seen a lot of change in her with her and her horse. I mean, it took me one day, she probably got in there and took control. And she's one needs to have a bad because 